back. This is Mr. Hassan from Mass Channel, and I'm now going to be answering question number four from the M1 Mechanics um, paper from January 2008 at Excel. This question here, then part A and B about statics. You've got this particle P, which is of mass six kilograms, lying on the surface of a smooth plane. Okay, so the plane is smooth, meaning we don't have any friction. The plane is inclined at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. The particle is held in equilibrium, it's an equilibrium, by a force of magnitude 49 newtons acting at an angle alpha, theta, sorry, to the plane as shown in figure one. The force acts in a vertical plane through a line of greater slope of the plane. Right, so first of all, smooth plane, as we mentioned, so there's no friction going to be involved. It's inclined at an angle of 30 degrees. The horizontal particle is held in equilibrium. So that means the resultant forces on this object are zero. Okay, so for example, the force up the plane and the force down the plane will be, um, you know, equal to each other, right? Because it is in equilibrium um, when you resolve the forces up and down the plane. Then <clears throat> we also know that the, what well, the way it says here, the force acts in a vertical plane through a line of greater slope of the plane. A lot of students they don't actually know what that means. So if you think about it, if what, what they actually mean is like, if you were looking from this angle here, you might see something in front of you like this ramp. Okay. And what it means is basically this, this particle P, um, if it would, could move, it would move up directly up the plane, straight up the plane like this. It wouldn't go like at an angle. Okay. So that's what it means. Okay, so in a vertical plane through the line of greatest slope, the line of greatest slope of the plane, it would move straight up this. So the force acts in such a way that it would push the particle straight up that line, not at an angle somewhere. So even if you didn't understand what that means, it's not a big deal. Okay, that's not really, it doesn't really affect us in terms of this question and how to answer it. So now, in order to answer this question, what I'm going to do, first of all, it says show that cosine theta equals three fifths. So I'm gonna. I've just a little got. A, um, I've got a little diagram or a copy of that diagram. I'm gonna put here, and I'm gonna start drawing the forces acting on this object. Now, I personally like to draw forces that are before the object. I like to draw them after the object because I just find it's easier to resolve the forces. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna draw this force like like this. Okay. So we know this is 49 newtons, and I'm gonna get rid of. Okay, the, um, I'm going to get rid of the line before it, so we go out those. I'm going to get rid of this. Now, what we also ne need to realize um, before that is that this angle here is also theta. Okay, vertically opposite. So this is theta. This is 49 newtons, so we can use that. And this is exactly the same. There's no difference between what I've just drawn and what they drew. I just find it easier to deal with when it's drawn in this way. So I'll just get rid of these. And I've just drawn the same force acting in the same direction but just drawn it like so it's after object. I, I, I find that way easier to deal with. Okay, then we also have the weight of the object acting vertically down. And we know the weight of the object is 6 G Newtons. 6 G Newtons. G stands for you know 9.8, acceleration due to gravity. And we also know there's a reaction force which is perpendicular always to the surface that this object is in contact with. So that's a reaction force. Now, what we need to do here is we need to resolve these forces parallel and perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it in a slightly different color. Okay, so I'm going to draw it like this. I'll draw it like this. Now, this force here is acting up the plane. Okay, and it's in this direction here. Let me just change its color. I'll change its style. Okay, so this is the force, 49 newtons, resolved parallel to the plane, and this is the force resolved perpendicular to the plane. And this is the force, 60 newtons, resolved parallel to the plane, and this is the force resolved perpendicular to the plane. Now, this angle here is... 30 degrees. Okay, now, how do we know this angle is 30 degrees? That's sometimes um, one of the questions that students ask. This angle here is 30 degrees. Now, how do we know this is 30 degrees? Well, 
you see this little triangle over here? The angle on this corner, uh, and this corner is 90, and this is the, and we, we, let's just pretend we don't know it first. If you consider this little triangle here, this is 90 degrees, and this angle here is the same angle in this big triangle, and in this big triangle here, this angle here, and this, this, this angle is the same as the angle in this small triangle, this is 90 degrees. You have a 90 degree angle here, and you have this angle on this corner, okay, and then you have this angle being 30. In the small triangle, you have a 90 degree angle here. This is the same angle as the other angle in this big triangle. Therefore, this third angle must be the same as this third angle, so this must be 30 degrees, as we just mentioned. So that's 30 degrees. So now, if I want to resolve the forces um, parallel and perpendicular to the plane, the 49 newtons, I want to resolve it par parallel to the plane, so I have to resolve it going into the angle, or you could say along the adjacent side to this angle, so that's 49 times cosine of theta. And if I want to resolve this in, an, in, an, in a direction which is perpendicular to the plane, in this direction here, it's going to be like over there, so this is like 49 times, going away from the angle, the sine of the angle theta. And here I want to resolve it going into the angle, so this is 6g times into the angle cosine of, this is 30 degrees, this angle here, and here is 6g times, going away from the angle, the sine of 30 degrees. All right, so now we've resolved all the forces parallel and perpendicular to the plane. Now what we can say, um, if we know that we're in equilibrium, we know that we're in equilibrium. So what we can say now is the forces up the plane and forces down the plane must be the same. So I can say 49 times the cosine of theta must be the same as 6g times the sine of 30 degrees. And I know that the cosine of theta is therefore equal to 6 times 9.8 times sine of 30, which is a half, 0 0.5 over 49. Now let's see what that gives us. When we put that in our calculator, we don't need to find the angle, just the cosine of the angle. So I'll take my calculator. All right, and here's the calculator. Let me just make it a bit bigger. Okay, so we're going to now... See, so we'll make it a bit bigger. All right, so we have 6 times 9.8 times 0 0.5 divided by 49, 3 fifths. That's exactly what we had to show. Show that cosine theta equals 3 fifths. So we've answered part A of this question, and that's fine. Now, for part B, it says find the normal reaction between P and the plane. So we're going to find the normal reaction between P and the plane. Okay, so that's this R here. Now, what I can say is, if I resolve the forces perpendicular to the plane, I can say R is equal to these forces resolved perpendicular, which is 49 times the sine of theta plus 6G times the cosine of 30 degrees. Now, the sine of theta. What is the sine of theta? Well, we know the cosine of theta is 3 fifths. So if we think about that, we can make this like little triangle. If this is theta, this is a right angle triangle, the cosine of theta would be the opposite, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Therefore, this is going to be 4, okay, because of Pythagoras' theorem. 5 squared minus 3 squared is 25 minus 9. 16 squared of 16 is 4. So this is 4. So we can say that, therefore, the sine of theta must be equal to 4 over 5. So I can replace the sine of theta with 4 over 5. So I say R equals 49 times 4 over 5 plus 6 times 9.8 times the cosine of 30, which is root 3 divided by 2. So R is therefore equal to, and if we take this uh, calculator again, we have 49 times 4 fifths, which is 0 0.8, time, um, plus, sorry, you have 6 times 9.8 times, when in degree mode, yes, let's just put it in here. I, th I know it's root root 3 over 2, but I'll just put it to make sure. Cosine of 30. Now that gives us 90.122. 90.122 goes on like that. So therefore we can say R is either equal to 90 newtons to 2SF, or if you want, we can say R is equal to 90.1 newtons. That's probably better to write it to 3SF to be safe, because 3SF is acceptable in all cases. 
all right? But 2SF is um, normally what you write if you've used G, which we use G, but you, they'll accept 3SF, that's probably the safest thing to do. So there's the answer to part B, and now we're going to move on to part C. It says the direction of the force of magnitude 49 newtons is now changed. It is now applied horizontally to P, so that P moves up the plane. The force again acts in a vertical plane through a line of greater slope of the plane. Find the initial acceleration of P. Right, so the object now is being um, pushed by this force, which is no longer at an angle. So I'm going to get rid of this force, um, the way it's drawn here, as I did before. And I'm going to draw it differently. So it's 49 newtons, we know that. But there's no angle. The angle now is not theta anymore. The angle is such that the force is applied horizontally. Okay, so I'm just going to draw it. I'm going to redraw it as I did before. After the object, like this. So it's horizontal, and that's 49 newtons. We know that's 49 newtons. <clears throat> so there we have 49 newtons that way. Now, because it's horizontal, then this angle here is also 30 degrees. All right? And we've got also, of course, its weight, which we know is 6G newtons. Okay, so we know the weight is 6G newtons. And we know the reaction force acts perpendicular to the plane. That's R. All right, so now this thing is accelerating up the plane. So now the resultant force is not equal to zero. There is a resultant force which is equal to the mass times acceleration. So I can now resolve these forces parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So this 49 newtons, I can resolve it parallel to the plane and also perpendicular to the plane. Same with the 60 newtons, parallel to the plane and also perpendicular to the plane. All right, so now... This is going to be, if we uh, resolve this parallel to the plane, going into the angle, adjacent side, you could say, that's 49 times the cosine of this angle 30. And here this is 49 times the sine of the angle 30, going away from the angle. Here this, again, is 30 degrees. So this is 6G times going into the angle, cosine 30. And this is 6G times the sine of 30 degrees. So now we have a situation where when we resolve parallel to the plane, Okay, it's accelerating upwards, so the, the resultant force is 49 times the cosine of 30 minus 6g times the sine of 30, and we know that that's equal to the mass, which is 6, times the acceleration. So we can just basically find the acceleration by dividing all of this by 6. So we have 49 times the cosine of 30 minus 6 times 9.8 times the sine of 30, which is 0 0.5, over 6. So that should give us our answer. So we take a calculator. We have 49 times cosine 30 <clears throat> minus, and we have 6 times 9.8 times um, the sine of 30. I'll just put the sine of 30. I know it's a half anyway, no problem. Divided by 6. And that should give us an answer. Acceleration is 2.172. 2.1725 dot dot dot. So we want to write it either to 2SF, which would be 2.2 meters per second squared, or we can write it as 3SF 2.17 meters per second squared. Okay, both of those are acceptable answers in this question. And that completes question number four. Okay, that completes question number four from January 2008, M1. Um, one of the students was asking me to answer this question. And um, other questions, if I get to answer them from this paper, if somebody requests me to answer questions from this paper, I'll put them in the playlist that will appear in this region here. Other questions from this topic of statics, I'll put it in the playlist here. And other questions from the question of dynamics, which this is part C is from, I'll put in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.